Champ Select now. We have a game here for you guys. It's in Group uh, B of the tournament structure that we're running at the moment. It's a uh, OGN style tournament that we're running this time round. So we'll have uh, four groups with four teams in all of the groups. Each team will play each other twice in the same sitting, which will give them a point per win. So a team could win two points for a engagement from another team, or they could win one point each, or they could win none. Uh, each of these points will go towards a final standing in the group, but we will separate out the winners and the losers into several different ending brackets. We will have a gold bracket, a silver bracket, and a bronze bracket, depending on your respective position in the group. Uh, our first game comes to you between Cardiff and Fragsock. Theory, uh, I know you're quite new to Neil casting, but have you, what, do you, what do you think of these two teams? Have you cast them before? Uh, I can't remember straight away if I've them, but the current standings and seedings looks like this. Cardiff being the fifth place and Fragsock placing fourth in the last tournament. Um, I believe they're both the top seeds of the group, is that right, Excandrum? Yeah, these two are very good uh, teams. I've seen Fragsock play quite a lot and Cardiff were a newcomer coming in at 16th seed in our last tournament, which was the lowest seed you could be. Uh, this was only because we seed based on previous tournament success and from our previous season, um, which is why Manchester still retains our top seed in this tournament, even though they uh, came second in the last tournament. But Cardiff, uh, coming in 16th tournament, doing really, really well, and ended up being our fifth seed coming into this tournament, so they've leapfrogged quite a few teams. Um, I'm expecting this to be quite a close game, though. Um, being the two sort of 54 seeds and being the top seeds of this group. Um, I know that Cardiff really loves to play Zach, uh, and that's why it's been banned out. And because I'm just going to have to run through you guys all of the bands, because unfortunately, Theory cannot see, because we have a dedicated streamer today. Um, it does look like um, Fragsock have banned out Fizz, Zach, and Zed. So it looks like they're targeting uh, specifically Oatjan, who plays a lot of Zach, and then also. Well, just to just to reiterate this as well, uh, I in fact have the stream myself, so I can see um, on the opposite. You can see that. Okay. A Java nerf in Banda. So oh, that's fine. It's a great way to band out that mid lane assassin. What do you think of that? Well, Kasten is becoming more and more popular. Um, I know you keep up the LCS quite a lot. Uh, and notice he's just becoming a bit more of a popular champion. These highly mobile mid laners are becoming more and more um, apparent in the sort of met new meta. So we've seen Ari picked up straight away from Fragsock. Ari has been a big resurgence in terms of AP carry in mid lane. Uh, Kasten's one of those sort of champions that actually counters Ari quite heavily. So it does look like they've actually. Um, Cardiff have actually banned out a champion <laughs> I don't think Fragsock would have wanted to play against. Um, I think with potentially you had sort of a... Uh, you had Cardiff themselves thinking, I want that area. It's just not turned out in their favour, has it, at all? Well, obviously Ari is a highly contested mid lane pick in the Going straight over to Fragsock as first pick, they really value that as a high priority pick for their team. Um, and the Vayne pick up. So... Really, that's one of the most popular solo Q AD carries at the moment, and she has the power to wreck through anything uh, mid-game into late-game. She only has that really weak early stage of her um, game, really. I mean, I know you play a lot of Vayne, or have played a lot of Vayne in the past, Theory. What do you think about it? Um, I love the pick. I love Vayne as a champion. However, into that area, I'd always be sceptical about a Vayne pick. She has that ability to get in there with that, quick, uh, with that death fire grasp and just blow you up immediately. Um, so, if they don't have a good enough protect strategy going down from the Cardiff side, you might see in team fights Vayne not being able to do very much really at all. Obviously, yeah. the Lee Sin's got a shield and a kick, but you're straight away having a lot of CC um, picked by uh, Fragsock, which could just eliminate the Vayne straight out of the fight as well. Yeah, and the Lee Sin pickup from Cardiff, he's not the best jungler for peeling like in terms of hard cc peeling there's really two forms of peeling you have the sort of the slow damagey type peeling which forces uh bruisers to back off because they're taking too much damage or you have the really hard cc peeling which someone like frag soccer picked up nautilus would provide he's really good at peeling for any carry obviously having his uh staggering blow which um snares a target that he hits on his first auto attack and he has the highest form of cc in the game obviously with four methods of cc so every one of his abilities providing some form of CC, well, everyone bar um, his shield, providing some form of CC. So yeah, um, good pickup there from the Fragsock team, trying to, oddly enough, 
going for a Graves. Now, I, I know me and you are big fans of Graves theory. We've uh, one of our favourite AD carries that's uh, been around, and he's very good at playing against a, a Vayne. So Vayne's going to have a hard uh, laning phase. But they have picked up a Kennen. Kennen and, and they've got a Janna. So they have just picked up this support with a high CC and Kennen having the um, high CC from his slicing Maelstrom. Uh, Janna being an incredibly good uh, support to peel with. Obviously, she has all of her abilities, which are um, quite high in protect, I would say. She has a Tornado, her uh, Monsoon, her Shield, and her uh, Zephyr, which obviously slows movement speed when applied to an enemy. But what do you think about that team? Because I personally don't think they've got enough tanky, inherent tanky champions there. I mean, Leeson's okay, tanky, if you build him tanky, but he doesn't get a good health per level. Yes, definitely. It's a, it's a blow-up kind of team. Um, bit of a contradiction in those picks between the Janna and Kennen. Obviously, both Ortiz kind of working towards separate goals. But if you can use it correctly with the disengage into the re-engage from the Kennen ulti or vice versa, then they can really complement each other. It just depends. You can make major, major mistakes by blowing them at the same time and you end up actually pushing all the enemy team out of your uh, out of the Kennen's ultimate. Um, they're hovering over Lissandra. I don't know if that's... I'm a bit late to the party and if that's been locked in. Yeah, yes, Lissandra, has. Has just, Lissandra has just been locked in. Um, you could probably jump into uh, straight up casting and about twenty uh, straight up um, spectating about twenty second series just to let you know. Um, Thank you. Yeah, uh, so Lissandra's a good pick here. I think it works really well with the Ken, and she can get herself in there, uh, use her Ring of Frost, and uh, and then obviously use her um, Glacial Tomb on herself to give herself that one point five two second Zonia along with a possible Zonia. Um, it's. Um, a really, a really good way of, of, of setting up for the cannon to come in and get a good AoE ultimate down. But still, I just don't know. They're high on damage, low on tanks. Uh, whereas Fragstock have gone for high tank but low damage um, here. It depends on how the depends on how the hench builds his Renekton. I have seen him play Renekton a lot. I know he is a good Renekton player. Um, so it would be interesting to see how he builds him. I, I don't know if, if you've seen the recent trend in um, the recent trend in. Um, no, yeah, the, the recent trend in um, Renekton builds, where he builds Ravenous Hydra. Um, I haven't. Um, no. I'm not a top laner, so I'm a bit behind on this, but is it good? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's high damage. Now, Renekton has high uh, AD scaling ratios on all of his abilities, so he is one of those champions that you can build AD and do a good amount of early to mid-game damage, but because he's one of those AD caster champions... Um, he, he will fall off really hard late game if he decides to build AD. And also he needs to be ahead to build AD, really. I mean, it depends on how bit good he's going to do against either Kennen or Lissandra. I would expect to be seeing Kennen in this top lane, at which point I don't know if Renekton will do that well against him. Um, depends on how Kennen chains his spill abilities, whether he saves his lightning rush to get away when he sees a slice and dice or something like that. Um, overall, though, I really like uh, the picks from Fragsock here. Um, they, they've, they've really centered their team around protecting Graves because Graves has uh, got, you know, he's, he's got a short range and he's got a bit of AD caster element to him, where, especially when it comes to his early to mid game damage. But he's still one of these champions that has a self attack speed steroid buff, a bit like Tristana. And he has combined with that, he has got the um, escape that comes with uh, quick draw. So yeah. he's still one of these high. Uh, AD uh, auto attack champions and, and, and he still can do a good amount of damage going into the late game. He's not the worst. Um, but I, I think he should beat Vayne early on in lane, especially with a Blitz crank. I'd be hoping to see that that is a lane I think, they'll look to I think exerted. definitely. But I think the team can't rely on that really. Um, you've got this Vayne that if she's allowed to get fed, if she can pick off one champion early in the team fight, you know, there's very little disengage coming from Fragslot. They're a bit of a all-in kind of team. Whereas on the other hand, you've got you've got a disengage. You can uh, wave clear well with the Sandra and the Kennen from Cardiff. So if you can let that Vayne get fed early, then they've got a real chance of really dominating in team fights. Especially as we mentioned earlier, you know these assassins which are are coming in to kind of eliminate the AD carry the area from the frag sock. The Sandra can actually do a very similar job with that uh, with that tomb ultimate and uh just take out graves if she needs to the yeah, but... the other threat there but apart from that the damage is kind of lackluster on the the opposite side depending on how that renekton builds and it, it depends on how i think these teams are going to do going into mid game so depending on which way the lanes are going to work out um if 
like if Ragsock get behind here, if Ragsock get behind going to mid game, they're going to get completely dominated. And I think it's something they've got to be wary of. They've got Nautilus, who is a high CC, good early ganking jungler. I think he needs to get into the lanes and put as much pressure as he can. Lee Sin is good uh, as a jungler, but you have to be very skilled with him. You have to be probably looking, you're going to take one out of three kills just because your Q has that execute ability. Um, whereas Nautilus is a lot better at, at getting solid ganks off with his form forms of CC. So I think what... Fragsock need to do here is really exert their early dominance in the ganking that uh, Nautilus provides uh, and then run in to this mid game having that advantage because they need the Renekton to be ahead, they need the Graves to be ahead, they need the Ari to be ahead early because unfortunately for them all of their team doesn't do as well as uh, Cardiff's team late game because Kennen, Lissandra and Vayne late game is going to be horrendous for them to deal with. I just don't think they'll have the tanking or the uh, damaging ability to deal with that the kind of combo that they can provide. And especially since you can't build against the late game Vayne because of the true damage. You just, I mean, obviously you can try, but the later that Vayne gets, the better um, the better it's going to be for their team. And, and, and you, you can build health, but she does percentage health, da health damage and true damage. You can build armor and armor against her, but she's just going to do her true damage, which will go straight through it anyway. Uh, and veins often you often see veins with no more than sort of two hundred and fifty AD late game because they have all of the attack speed. Yeah. So it, it, it's just going to be something that I think Fragsock are going to need to run with this early. Um, if Ari can build a quick death fire grasp and combo some ganks down bottom with Nautilus, I think they'll do really well here. But to be honest, it, I think it'd be odd to not see Cardiff pull out a lane swap here. Yeah, definitely. You know. Uh... You need that to make sure that she gets ahead this early game, like we said. She's the power mm. power player here. She's the important one. The rest yeah. are really there just to look after her and stop those aggressive types getting on top of her and eliminating Graves in the process. Yeah, so, I mean, Lissandra and Kennen can both use their ultimates defensively and defensively, which I think yeah. is what helps Cardiff here. Um, but, like I said, if Renekton can get tanky, if, if Ari can get her Deathfire Grasp and get ahead, if, if Graves can go toe-to-toe -to -toe and beat uh, Vayne in lane, I think that they'll be in good stead to, to win this out. Uh, Fragsock should be in the better position here because they have their better team comp, I think, in my opinion. Does look like Blitz is a little bit slow to leave the um, starting area here. Uh, do you think we're going to have any level 1 play come out? I mean, they do have a Blitz. Oh. It'd, be odd, it'd be odd not to see. We straight away oh, from the purple so side, the rich. pings going down towards bottom Tribrush. Um, blue sides are setting up here in the red bush. Blitzcrank, as you say, is a bit late to the party. Whether he's going to come down and try and face check this tri brush, we could see some action here. Uh, purple team are, are grouping up, going to run straight into it. Blitz is just going to go with his team, so they're, they're going to get vision here as they pass by and know straight away that they're going for the red buff. This could be a, a real problem. Yeah, they, they, drop down on red buff. they look like they want to counter this uh, Nautilus's red buff. Now the blue have, team have no vision, so Fraxlock have now got no vision. They probably still think they're sitting in the red buff. Blitz is probably going to look to try and make a pull, but it does look like they're just rotating out. Maybe they're a little bit worried, but it does oh. look like they've already had a charm here. Oh. Charm going down. Lots of damage going down onto the leads in, and the ignite's just ticking. It's chugged the health part, and it's just going to heal through it. So that could have been really devastating there, but both teams just escaping with uh, very little. Lee Sin's running towards bottom turret, whether he can get that execute. Janna is going to successfully pull out the execute, as is Lee Sin by the looks of things. Yeah, that's two executes though, and it's now heading to 155, that magical timer when both the buffs spawn. If not, let's get ahead now. Lee Sin's going to be a bit behind. I don't think he's going to get a free pull from his team here, um, which means he'll have to use Smite for the first large... Um, for the first large uh, buff. Uh, it does mean he's going to leave it behind and he's not going to be able to do the all-important Lee Sin counter jungling. Uh, yeah. Nautilus has a very weak early game. In the jungle, he, he, he can do a lot of damage, but he's quite susceptible to counter jungling. Uh, and maybe the Lee Sin pick uh, was there to try and counter the Nautilus or try and counter maybe the sort of uh, classic um, utility junglers that you tend to see early on. But Ari did take a charm first. He did manage to land that charm early on and does did put Lee Sin a little bit out of the game because he's just taken that red buff. However, he has taken it and he's still got a fair amount of health left. Um, but Nautilus is reacting and is heading over to his blue buff, but there is a ward and I think he has been seen. Yep, yeah, I mean, vision straight away important. I was very surprised how kind of few wards were dropped there in the jungle as purple invaded. Um, that bush right there that blue side was sitting in, one of the most important bushes to check 
You're putting yourself in a real bad situation. And Leeson's so. coming into top lane for a gank on Renekton. Renekton knows he's there. He's trying to head back now, but Leeson gets off his tempers and the cripple. Red buff is ticking. He hits the Q. He's not wanting to use his... He uses the flash just as Leeson uses his sonic wave into re resonating kick. So well done there to save the flash until he knew the Q was up on the Leeson. However, he has been forced back in lane. Kennen has now got the entire wave pushing towards him, which means that Renekton's going to be a bit behind in XP, a bit bar behind in CS as well. Uh, does look like Graves is trying to bully out this bottom lane. Uh, what did you think about that gank up top lane? Um, it was a bit impatient in my opinion. You know that Kennen was slightly out of position for the gank. Um, really struggling to keep up with the Renekton was uh, slicing dice in the way. Uh, if she'd have got herself into a bit of a better position as a... As the leasing came in, that could have easily been a kill right there. Yeah, it looks like Blitz goes to the pool on Janna. Janna has got no flash. Wow, Graves completely misses his uh, buckshot. Uh, none of the bullets actually making contact right there. Bit of a wasted engage. And actually, the going in favour of the purple team right there. Uh, Graves has pushed the entire wave to the bottom turret and is now heading back, leaving Vayne to farm on the turret. Vayne is only six CS behind, so if she can pick up all of this CS on the turret, she'll have actually come out of this uh, early game a little bit better than Graves. And Vayne's are more than happy to do that. Let it push the turret. You've got that tumble there and a really good uh, last hitting ability under the turret, especially with the Janna, the extra damage from the shield. Um, I'd have expected to see a bit more patience from the Graves there. Um, it's gone for a second Dorans, but really, if you can just stay in lane until you get that, uh, that uh, BF sword, your boost in damage when you have your ultimate almost makes it impossible to escape, as even with a, a barrier with a decent blitz hook going behind it. Uh, Kellen has started Doran's Blade in lane, however he has got AP, so it looks like he will be going into a normal Kennen AP build. He is levelling Electrical Surge first, which if any of you don't know is Kennen's W, where he can activate anyone with a Mark from the Storm and do extra bit of uh, magical damage. So it looks like he's going for that auto attack harass. Pause on Janna again in the bot lane, Blitzcrank going, oh wow, and the flash is coming up for Janna. The Condemn going onto Graves, just managing to um, force him back before he could get the killing blow on Janna. Really, really quick action in the bot lane, forcing Janet to use her flash. Uh, Nautilus does look like he's gearing up for a gank in the bot lane, but there is a ward in the side brush. It is about to run out. Bits trying to make the pull. Nautilus just running into that side brush. No one. I, mean, I think they must have seen him, even when the minions, even without the ward, Nautilus walked through the brush with the minions having the vision of him right there. Um, but really, Vayne's doing a good job of just uh, surviving out this bottom lane so far. I mean, would you agree, Theory? Yeah, that's what it's all about here. You've seen the pink ward just placed in side brush so They're gonna see this blitz trying to play aggressive again. I wouldn't be surprised if they're aware yet. Yeah. They've seen this. Oh, grab goes down onto the main double grab. It's gonna blow her up. Graves picks up the first blood. There you go. What do you think? Yeah. Of that? Well, really well played from the uh, Nautilus and the Blitzcrank playing Hook City right there. Um, really, really, really sort of. Capitalizing on the fact that Vayner's got a short range, uh, they pink that side rush. Nautilus playing mind games with the bot lane, really. So he's saying, I've just come in for a gang. It didn't work. I'm going to wander off, but I'm going to come back. So I, I'm going to lull you into a false sense of security. Um, so really well played uh, from the, the Nautilus and the Blitz right there. And hitting the Blitz. And look at this uh, ultimate coming down the bot lane. Kennen is really, really, really low. But so is uh, Renekton. Didn't quite hit six to have his Dominus right there. Didn't have the extra health to survive. Kennen escaping with less than 50 health right there. Really, really close. Well done to be fair to the Rector to try and all in him when he was on such, well, practically really quite far behind in lane. Uh, really well yeah. played there from the uh, Kennen and the Renekton. Um, the Kennen, as you saw there, just tried to flash to anticipate that extra slice and dice for the last hit, but the Renekton was not actually stunned off into that ultimate, so it didn't even matter. So. That means that Kennen's got no no flash on top lane, and this blue buff is gonna pop any second round. For the, actually, it won't. He's fading onto the lead in the blue buff, won't he? So his uh, his jungle pattern right now won't really be towards the top side. Maybe Kennen can stay safer. We have seen a fairly uh, passive mid lane right now. Uh, the Lissandra and the Ari, none of them looking to go too hard on each other. It does look like there's a bit of an engage in the mid lane from the junglers right here. Uh, Nautilus getting caught out, his shield is up. He's not looking to engage on the Lee Sin right now, just backing off because the Ari wasn't in position. Um, Lissandra also obviously had her glacial uh, path to get into position and she also has her frozen tomb up still, so uh, really uh, wise decision from the Nautilus to back out there. And this red buff has just respawned. He is looking to go take it. He has got smite up, so that'll be a quick take for him right now. Um, in the bot lane, it does look like Graves is now really, really punishing this uh, Vayne. 
and, and Blitzcrank is getting into position for these hooks. He's putting in the uh, lane dominance that Blitzcrank should be putting in when he's uh, ahead in the lane. Uh, really, just like, Graves is not particularly freezing the lane, but he's just making sure that Vayne can't get the important CS. So the uh, st the the uh, Siege minion is very, very uh, low right now, so if Vayne misses out on that, that's a chunk of gold and a chunk of experience that she's not going to take. Uh, but Graves is currently sitting on about ooh, nearly 30 CS ahead of the uh, Vayne, so, but she has got an entire wave pushing towards her, so she could get a little bit back from this, but doing exactly what Graves needs to be doing, don't you agree, Theory? Yeah, definitely. You know, he's got that burst damage, and with the Blitz crank behind it, there's very little you can do if you get grabbed. Um, potentially, the Vayne should have maybe taken a bit of a risk. Uh, as soon as that Graves and the Blitzcrank hit six, she's never going to be able to uh, last through a hook. So maybe she should have put a little harass there, anticipating the level six. Um, Nautilus just backing off here. He's looking for the gank, but Vayne is playing uh, too safe. And with the, the Sandra going missing, yeah, they're just all going to back off. Yeah, I think what we could have seen there was a double jungle uh, gank. So obviously the jungler from um, a uh, the jungler from um, Fragsock and the jungler from Cardiff joining each other in the bot lane. Uh, I think they would have gone uh, Fragsock's way if it was a, a one for one uh, jungler for jungler sort of entry into lane. But Lissandra did move down to try and pull off a four man gank. But um, Fragsock was good with their wards. They had wards out on the dragon. Uh, and did see Lissandra moving down, so they decided to just back out, and wisely so. Uh, this top lane now looks like it's really going in the favour of Kennen. He's currently sitting 31 CS ahead of this Renekton, uh, really, really sort of pushing him out of lane. And I've seen this uh, one in Solidarity play before. He's really, really good at doing this. He really manages to bully out the lane when he has the uh, advantage. So he's putting, well, putting so much pressure on the Renekton, who's actually only managed to pick up a Doran shield and a Doran's Blade, and now just come back for that Null Magic Mantle, but unfortunately this is not a good position for a Renekton to be in. Renekton's that are behind are probably not one of the most useful characters in the game. Um, he has one, he's like a Pantheon, uh, if anyone knows how Pantheon works. If your Pantheon's behind, you'll feel like your spells are doing no damage, and you'll feel like you'll die really quickly, and I think this is how this Renekton's going to feel if he can't get back into it. I think he's going to have to ask for some help from the jungler, but to be honest, being a Kennen, he's a very hard uh, character to gank. It's interesting enough that it's gone for the, the Kennen's gone for the double Dorans and Sorcerer's Boots. I'd have anticipated the uh, haunting guys there for that extra damage and that uh, spell penetration. Um, you know, the Boots is going to rush Sonya's by the looks of things. It's just built his amplifying team and double armor for the uh, arm guard. So I'd have expected that. Um, I think really the Renekton is going to have to sit there and try and farm up as much as he can. As soon as he gets a decent couple of. Uh, Damage items down. A misplay from Kennen could could spell disaster because Renekton's damage output suddenly inflates as soon as you grab at any items. Um, so what do you think is going to happen towards the dragon? You see, we see them looking towards and seeing if it's being done right now. I think uh, Fragsuk are really looking to make a play on this bot lane. Like oh, Graves is really putting himself in position to do a lot of damage to this vein. Uh, however, the, wow, well, pull on the Renekton. Uh, so pull on the vein coming out. It's really, really, really low. The flash comes out. I think. Blitzcrank could have done more there, um, he could have gone for the kill, I think he was really looking to give it out to Graves, just really mistimed on how much the collateral damage was going to do to him, uh, and Vayne really just escapes with a sliver of life right there, less than 30 health, and uh, unfortunately I think that was just a case of Blitzcrank not wanting to be greedy, but didn't do the uh, the good old kill secure right there. But Yeah, you can't really... hesitate first like Janet, can you at all? Yeah. Bar the Vayne, I think every other lane is winning out. But it does look like they're going on to the Sandra. She's really, really, really low. Um, Death Charge comes out of her, but she just managed to escape. Uh, they didn't look like they were sure whether they wanted to commit right there. Um, so uh, they just decided to back off when she went under turret. Uh, and she managed to escape without having burned anything, actually. I think she still had her ultimate up as well. So, yep, she still had her Frozen Tomb up as well. So even if they had chosen to go onto tower, I think she would have been looking to bait them with the Frozen Tomb. Um, you know, that Zonya-esque... Uh, like ability, which means she can untargetable for two seconds. Um, so yeah, really, really well played from the Lissandra. It looks like Ari is going onto the Lee Sin. Takes half of his health away with one combo. Uh, really well played from this Ari. I mean, she is slightly behind on CS, but she's really pushing out anyone that comes near her right now. Uh, Lissandra obviously looks like she wants to go in, but just backs away when she doesn't quite get in range with her Glacial Shroud. Ari does pop Spirit Rush, however, just to make sure she gets out in 
So just make sure you get some time. Yeah, sorry guys, I'm just reading the Twitch chat. So this is why I'm getting a little bit uh, distracted. Um, we do think we have had this problem before where you, we tend to lose frames from Twitch. Um, it, it tends to be not something to do with our streamers. We'll try and drop it down to 480 if we can. Um, okay, it looks like... <laughs> just missing some action at mid lane here. But Sandra went in with her with her W to uh, lock up the area knowing that her ultimate was frozen tombed on top of it and blew her up for the kill. Uh, uh, Nautilus come around trying to find her. Uh, Lissandra's just going to take her back out. Life is easy. Uh, Nautilus just going to move on to his red buff here. Yeah, uh, so... In also. The, it looks it like he's a bit very hard. There's a grab on the Vayne. Vayne is in with the buckshot. He's got classical damage off. Great, and then Vayne is lower than, lower than 30 health right now. She pops her ultimate. She's gone into her Night Hunter, and she hasn't used Tumble. She hasn't used her invisibility, but again, Vayne taken incredibly low, and Graves not managed to pick up the kill. He's not moving far enough forward. Uh, it does look like there's a bit of action in top lane. Uh, Renekton pops everything. He hasn't quite managed to escape from this cannon right now, and he uses Flash to get away. It does look like Lee Sin is coming in to try and finish him off. Action in every lane so far right now, guys. Yeah, both teams were very hesitant in all these things. Uh, there's a lack of vision on this top lane, so... When you see them engage, they're both kind of thinking, what if the jungler's there? You saw the Lee Sim was only a few seconds behind there. If he'd have been in on the, on the, as the engage went down, that was an easy kill. But it's easy to see here how Renekton can actually turn this lane. Um, both, both of them escaped and very little health, so a slight misplay from this cannon could mean that Renekton starts to get kills and starts to snowball the lane back in his favor. Uh, um, the other lanes both seem fairly matched. Uh, obviously, the Vayne getting pushed off the CS a lot. Uh, Graves now taking almost a 40 CS lead. Um, however, Vayne still keeping up. She's built that early Dorans to hopefully block some of that damage. Though Blitz is all AP based and magic based, so uh, probably a bit of a waste to buy. What do you think of that? Oh, a lot of. Well, it doesn't actually give armor anymore, so it's not doing that badly against uh, a Blitz crank. But it does give it her a little bit of 100. So it doesn't look like Sandra's coming into the bot lane. She's really giving it away with these slightly over aggressive plays from the vein, though. She's really chasing down. She really wants to try and get a kill. Um, but yeah, Lissandra's not quite pulling off these ganks. Lissandra. You lose the mid turret for this. Uh, yeah, it wasn't. The, and Ari both are. It wasn't the best uh, play from the Lissandra right there. She did give up her mid turret. What, what she needs to do is she needs to come in while a fight hasn't been engaged, so people can't react to her glacial path. That's the problem with this Lissandra right now. She's trying to come in too early to try and start the gank, but she's coming in from an area in which Graves can see the glacial path ending and can then just run away fairly easy. And Graves is being a little bit over-aggressive as well. Nautilus just wandering into that bush right there, but there is wards on both the Dragon and the Tribrush side for Cardiff right now. However, the Cardiff are ahead on gold, and that's just because of the CS differences between... Um, Renekton and uh, Kennen and the uh, the closest CS gaps between the other lanes, even though uh, Frags are ahead in some respects, they're actually closer than the difference between sort of Renekton and Kennen and Ari and uh, Lissandra, even though Ari has now managed to catch up. Interesting that we haven't seen a play on Dragon right now. Um, it's 16 minutes into the game and, and no one has decided to go for a Dragon. Maybe they're just really nervous about getting into a team fight when neither team feel comfortable. Anybody needs to be forcing the team fights, it's Fragsock. Because the longer you leave it, the more powerful that Cardiff's team fights are going to come. And that's true, but Lee Sin is one of these champions. If he has no items, then he's Looks like there's very... a gank going in the top lane. Kennen gets away with lightning rush. Death Charge comes onto Kennen and he flashes out. And Ari's still going in. The worst charm in the world, as I was told in Twitch chat, was just there. Ari goes down to turret. Kennen's still kill. alive right now. He looks like he's going to try and stun the Renekton. The Renekton does just get stunned, and that might be a double kill. That's a double kill for Renekton. Looks like that was an awful gank from uh, Frank Sock right there. Unfortunately, they should have backed out when they missed the hook onto Kennen from the Death Charge. Really, really poor. Um, charm coming out from Ari. <laughs> it does like there's a bit of uh, a, a ribbing coming out from the uh, from uh, the blue side saying that Nick's charms are always horrible. And I was told before the game that they were pretty terrible, and that wasn't the best in the world. Ari and Renekton giving away a double kill to this Kennen now, putting him three one. Not and the that position that they want to be in. That's exactly what Cardiff is looking for. That Purple that slight gold lead in order to be able to take that advantage and snowball it with the objectives, you know, they've been playing very hesitant, they've been a bit worried about the gold gap, so now they've 
both Vic, uh, both teams have picked up the turret, but that three kill deficit right there will give them that 1,000 gold lead, just over. And from that, you can easily see them picking up dragons and pushing on to the further objectives. Yeah, um, I think I think this is the problem for Frogsock right now. They're now almost 2k behind. They're in a team fight composition where they need to be ahead to make it work in the, in the mid game. Blitz just going for a pull on the blue buff. It hasn't actually respawned. Lissandra is currently sitting on it, so that was a bit of an odd pull for them. Um, there is no blue buff up on the um, blue side either, so Ari is currently without a blue buff. She doesn't look like she has finished or getting... She's not that close to finishing her Death Eye Grass by now, so she's going to be uh, a little bit useless until she manages to finish that for the next team fight. But then again, at w what position is she going to be in right now? Who does she put her Death Eye Grasp on? Because Kennen is really powerful. Uh, Lissandra is really powerful. If you don't put it on the vein, she'll just sit in the back and chunk everyone down. What 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 do you think she can do? I mean, you've got you've got two two grabs here. Well, three three grabs really, including the charm, where you can pull someone out of position and blow them up. So I think it's going to be a matter of who they manage to get on. You know, if they get that Lissandra, you're in a bit of trouble with her blitz hook because she's right in the middle she's got that claw to get out after she uses her combo um, but if they can manage to grab either the cannon or the graves and really blow them up with, uh, with the blitz silence then i think that's what Ares going to get on anyone that's grabbed just blow them off immediately then can worry about the rest of them um what do you think about the dragon here i mean i think they're looking to come around and maybe maybe pick that up but is well, it risky I well, I don't know, because I think uh, Cardiff at this moment should now be looking, saying, right, we, we can finish this game early because we're ahead right now. We've got the better team fight composition in terms of uh, a late game and a higher damage output. And it doesn't look like anyone from uh, Fragsock is particularly tanky right now. I mean, Nautilus hasn't even finished, Nautilus hasn't even finished his uh, Spirit of the Ancient Golem. So no one is particularly tanky right now, but doesn't really want to engage. Nautilus is going straight into the middle. He's put himself way out of his right here. Uh, Glacial Tree comes down and immediately dead. Yeah, that's too old. But Vayne is now caught out by the Blitz Crunch. He's got pulled. There is double flash coming out because they're so scared of the rest of the team coming around and finishing them off. Um, and you know, while Fragstar may have some really good cannibal players, minus the RE with that awful charm earlier, you know, Cardiff seems to be communicating really well here. They were on that dragon. They took it straight away with the out of the Nautilus, putting his nose in, managing to get to fight, and turned around to blow him up. Aerie and Graves were kind of, are we going in, aren't we? Um, you know, they need to get that communication sorted out, otherwise Cardiff are going to run away with this, now taking a 3,000 gold lead. Uh, Aerie almost about got that death fire out, I'd have thought. You know, she's been sitting on uh, on the needlessly large rod and the Venus, uh, Venus Codex for a good five minutes now. So perhaps she should go back, pick that up and start to um, pick off all from Cardiff's team. That could mean they could start to snowball turrets a bit more. Yeah, I think now the position that Frag Soccer are in, they need to look to try and take out people on their own. They need to sort of look to catch because I think a straight up team fight is not going to go in their favour. I mean, Nautilus is looking like he's building towards that uh, Age of the Legion into the uh, newly created, or newly remedied rather, uh, Lock at the Iron Salami. Salami. <laughs> Lock at the Iron Salari. So oh. yeah, it, it looks like, that, I mean, obviously that's not as potent as it was for, for shielding against magic damage. Um, there's no runic bulwark in the game anymore. It does look like they know the blue buffs up now, so Blitz is just going to grab it over. I think we're going to try and take this away. This will be a small victory uh, for Fragsock right now, so taking away that blue buff from Lissandra probably going to be a good thing for them, but there is a double Zonyas on um, Cardiff right now. They've hit some major item thresholds. Uh, Kenna nearly an Abyssal Scepter. Uh, Vayne has picked up a Blade of the Rune King. Looks like she's building either into uh, Infinity Edge or Last Whisper. So, I mean, really, they're just really ahead of the game right now, and they need to keep it in this position because I don't think there's much that Fragstock can do to be able to, to have the same impact. Kenna getting to position, he looks like he's trying to catch onto the Blitz, but doesn't actually go for the ultimate. Uh, let's just taken really low from a combo from Ari. Um, yeah, but that's... If, I, if Ari had popped a Deathfire Grass there, if she'd had it, that would have been a dead Lissandra. Yeah, you want to get that Deathfire as soon as you can, just for those moments, you know. That's what Ari's made for, to get in, get out, get a kill. You don't need to worry about uh, about, the rest, uh, about other people engaging on Ari. You've got two dashes left after you get a kill. You're going to get out regardless, usually. Especially with this combo, the cannon's only going to really 
be able to uh, catch you out if she's straight on top of you. Um, so what do you think the builds are going to go uh, on the vein wise? You know, we see her picking up that pickaxe. Is she going to go for that infinity edge or that phantom dancer earlier in order to get their attack speed like you said earlier? Well, I don't know. I mean, I think uh, I think she, could, she should be going towards that infinity edge. They haven't really picked up too much armor on the side of... Um, Frag stocks, so there's not much point picking up that last whisper right now. And obviously that you've got the Bay of the Ring King doing percentage health damage uh, per hit. Um, she's in a, a good position to go straight up damage right here. A lot of veins will look for that Phantom Dancer, but I don't really think she needs it at this point in the game. She's got a Kennen and you've got a Lissandra who can really uh, pos basically position for you because of the way their ultimates work and the way that the protection they provide. Um, she just needs to make sure she doesn't get caught. And there was a stray hook from Nautilus right there, a dredge line, just looking to seek out the vein. Didn't quite pick up. But Sandra looks like she wants to go in here. She goes in and gets the uh, case of two months to Ari. Ari really low, she's very well Vein is caught out by Stagger's blow from the Nautilus. She's going really low, but Kennan is now coming in. He's coming in and he drives his slice of melt from straight to the middle of the bitch bank and Renekton. Renekton with Pops Dominus, flashes away. No one has died yet, but now that's the first kill going over to Vayne. And uh, it does look like they're just going to back out. Graves wasn't even in that fight, but it looks like Vayne's chasing down. Ari manages to land a charm onto Kennan. Lee Sin coming in, misses his resonating strike, and Ari just looks to back away. Only then, hopping, actually, didn't even pop out Death Ride Grass, but once that entire fight. And that's going to be a turret going over to Cardiff with absolutely no uh, recon uh, reconciles from um, uh, Flagstock. So they lost one and nearly lost that mid turret, sorry. They didn't quite follow it up. Um, both teams really scrappy there. You've got so many uh, skill shots going in. And in fact, they managed to really nicely lock up the Blitzcrank and the Renekton with that ultimate. But all five of uh, Cardiff's members chased onto the Renekton, only picking up one kill. Um, which is a real shame because they committed so much to that team fight. Yeah, uh, but then they didn't really lose anything for it. So, I mean, it's just a matter of they've blown their ultimate cooldowns. And to be honest, Lissandra's is nearly up, Kennen's is halfway up, Vayne's is basically up, oh, Leeson's is coming up in the next three seconds. The only one that's going to be a little while is the Monsoon, which really didn't have that much effect, that team fight. Important to note here that A, you had the Death by Graph to be used by Ari, but also Graves wasn't in that fight almost at all, right until right at the end when he tried to pick him up with his ultimate. Graves picked up the red buff, so they're going to be gearing towards team fights now. You know, they thought that one didn't go so bad, maybe we can uh, salvage something from this. Maybe not worry about picking one up at a time. Um, so, Fragstock looking to get some uh, ward dominant. They've got a pink ward on Baron. They've got a few wards scattered deeper into the jungle, but maybe it's time to pick up an Oracles because as you can see, that mid area has about four or five wards on the Cardiff. Yeah, so they know exactly where Fragstock are uh, whenever they're moving through those. So it looks like this one is going into the fact that you've got a special suit onto Lord Duffington. Lord Duffington is taking a very low. And then gets a beautiful slicing maelstrom into the middle of four members of the team. That's a dead grave. That's a dead northwest. Renekton is taking a very low. Ari's coming back in. Wow, double charm. And Renekton gets a slicing dice double kill. Wow. Wow. Just, I didn't even know what to say. That was a turnaround right there from Fragstock. I thought it was going all in favour of Cardiff. And then Ari managed to land a orb of deception. Combined with the Renekton uh, Culver Meek, and they managed to take out two members at the same time. That was a double kill going into the Renekton, putting him back into the game. He has picked up a Spirit Visage, which is a very clever clever buy, um, giving him the cooldown reduction and the uh, magic resist for both of the AP damages coming out from Cardiff. But again, as kills going over onto the more key members for Cardiff, so they've got kills going onto Kennen and Lissandra and Vayne, whereas the kills. Uh, that team fight went mainly on to Renekton, who's not quite as key as I would say as Ari. Ari's still not managing to pick up any key kills. However, she has got 233 CS, so she is not exactly doing badly in terms of gold right now. Not at all. I mean, there, I think that what went wrong for Cardiff was the fact that they didn't pick out a specific target to blow up. Straight away, you saw the sand go in, use that frozen tomb on herself to knock out some damage. And then the cannon on top, but the graves are still standing. The veins just at the back, trying to focus down onto the area. He simply spirit rushed away, got out of the fight, and was able to come back in it at the end and finish people off. You know, Cardiff need to start looking just to eliminate one of their power players, either Graves or Ari out of the team fight, and then use that AoE just to keep the vein alive. You know, um, Vayne wasn't doing enough there in order to win the team fight. Yeah, and Cardiff, did, uh, so Fragsock did just pick up a free dragon there. They clawed the gold difference just back to 2k, which is really going to put a bit. It looks like they're going to engage onto Lee Sin with the Dredge Line. Dredge Line goes out, the Stone Blade comes out, and Lee Sin does just save that away. Renekton pots his Dominus, actually. So that's an ultimate down 
for frag sock right there. Uh, he is just running around aimlessly with this AoE magic damage hitting nobody right now. Uh, I think they're going to have a bit of vengeance here. I think they're going to want to try and get a charm to It does look like uh, Cardiff know that this is down. And I think possibly looking to get an engagement with Sandra, who is from the side. But Cardiff, uh, Fragsock did know that she was there. They have the ward in that brush, and so they know that she could come in from the side. And they have warded up these side brushes just in case that Lissandra comes and gives a surprise engage like she has been doing. Child lands onto uh, Helen, but he goes down, he doesn't pop Zonia. His ultimate doesn't go off. Uh, Lissandra managed to get in the middle, but she goes down as well. And she's popped her Zonia's, but Ari is very, very, very high still right now. Oh, uh, she just goes down. I just managed to miss most of that right there because there was so much going on. But that's a triple kill going down for Ari. Really, really good Zonia's from the Lissandra to keep herself alive right there. But again, this Ari playing incredibly well, getting herself way back from the team fight, throwing an orb deception across the team and picking up kills with it. And that's three kills onto Ari, giving her a positive score and an instant rabbit on's death count. And this could be a free, free uh, turret going over to Fragsock right now. Yeah, oh, and the dredge lag goes on to Janna. She gets the staggering blow. Looks like she's going to be taken down pretty low, but she managed to flush away. And there's no mana. So Blitzcrank didn't manage to follow up with a pull. So it does look like she's going to get away scot free, but they do take a free turret for it. And unfortunately, right there, as you said, the Sandra and the Cannon started to jump onto the backline, but it left Nautilus and Renekton there wailing down the top of the vein. Actually, the Ignite just picking up the kill. And at that point, once that vein's out of the fight, you can look to just turn on to people. You know, they're very cooldown dependent. Kennen and Cassandra, while the cooldown's low, as soon as they're out, they're both APs. You're not going to worry about auto attacks. So, if uh, Aerie lands the charm, she's going to blow you immediately up. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, the Kennen got charmed straight into them. They were forced. The, the Kennen obviously straight away wasted because she was eliminated out of the fight. The Sandra jumping forward, trying to deal some damage onto the Graves. Um, and I think she blew him up, am I right in saying? But it basically left the vein, uh, the vein very exposed to the rest of them, just killing them, really. Yeah, so, I mean, really, if they could take out this vein early on, and then Kennen didn't even manage to pop her ultimate right now. Um... So, I mean, that was a fight without the Slicing Maelstrom, which does provide a lot of utility and a lot of damage, considering he has got a, a, a quite a bit of AP right now. He's currently sitting on 262. Um, one second, guys. If you just uh, just think about what's going to happen, do you think they're going to be gearing up for a theory, a, a, the a Baron scene theory? Theory, a Baron scene theory. We got there in the end. Uh, I mean, I think both teams are so hesitant. Paul goes down on towards the cannon. They're going to try and blow him up, but he just escapes the red line. He goes down. Cannon blows the wall only catches two inside it. Graves is sitting at the back, even tons of damage. Sandra is there, he's gonna get blown up. That's just a very messy team fight. Vane's left at them farming, and I'm pretty sure the rest of the team are pretty annoyed that uh, he wasn't doing it much there. You know, they got the flash, uh, flash hook from the north that really meant that they were forced to engage without the Vane. Yeah, but, sorry, I was just uh, coming to you. Looks like they're going to try and take this mid turret, and they managed to get down pretty quickly. It doesn't look like uh, Cardiff want to engage right now. They have just lost two members somewhere in a fight that I completely missed. Um, I was just sorting something out in Twitch chat because it looks like we're still having problems changing over server. Um, so yeah, it doesn't look like uh, Flagsuck are really playing on the fact that this sort of mid game area is where they're going to be really strong. Uh, Vayne has actually gone for that last whisper, so she hasn't built any attack speed right now, so her true damage is going to be pretty low. Just not letting Sin knows that the red buff is being taken. He's not going to jump in for it. He does actually jump in for it. He managed to smite it away and gets out. That's going to be Renekton doing all the work for the Lee Sin and Lee Sin just taking the rewards. Um, and now, if you know, we see this Oracle's up on Blitzcrank, rather than taking this mid CS, I'd, I'd prefer to see him. Clearing this massive ward around the Baron area, they can then look to refocus onto that Baron and potentially, you know, claim the game in this mid game lull that Cardiff seemed to have. Um, the gold difference has always almost swung into Fragsock's favour, only a, a 1000 and a half gold down, so not a lot in it right now. Um, the CC is looking to do lots of work for Fragsock and Graves is managing to get. Lots of damage off, and though you didn't see that team fight. Basically, Bane was off farming as a Bane does, and uh, Kennen got hooked by the Nautilus with a brilliant flash hook. Um, and they were, they were just forced to engage. Kennen used that ultimate to try and lock people up, but without the backup damage from the Bane, team fight went into Fragsock's favour.
Yeah, and Ari has now picked up a Void Staff, so she's got a Rabadon's Void and Deathfire Grasp. That will basically burn anyone if she pops all of her skills onto one person in that team fight. I think uh, <coughs> Fragstruck are really gearing up to try and take this inhibitor to give themselves that mid lane uh, presence that you can get from the super minions pushing down. Nautilus going for a dread fire, not managing to hit anyone. Kenan looks like he's going for the slice and melt from. He does get stunned, taken really low. Janna is taken really low. Kenan's Claudius with the uh, slice and melt from going on. Everyone getting hit by it, but no one going down. Ari's taken down really low. Oh wow, Lissandra gets a um, brilliant glacial team onto Graves, taken really far away. Graves take, takes that down. Graves moving in. Kenan taking really low. The only two people left alive right now are Vayne and Kenan, but there are three people up for. Uh, uh, Flagstock right now uh, still has their uh, their good engagers, Blitzcrank and Nautilus. So it doesn't mean that uh, Cardiff can't get anywhere close and they won't want to get anywhere close. Because, oh, he land, man, nearly managed to land a hook onto Vayne, which has just managed to back out with a tumble in time. And that's an inhibitor going over for a 3 for 2 in favour of um, Flagstock right there. I mean, how long do you think Flagstock have before they have to find try and finish this game out? Um, while the Vayne. Vayne looked to be getting strong, you know, she made a real error with the item choice on the last Whisper, and in, in a team fight, she can really tell, you know, rather than taking down one target, moving on, she's actually having to spend a little amount of time on the squishier target. Um, they're looking to take the dragon here, they might be able to clear up the split. Brilliant flash of the Blitz Frank. Vayne chasing down onto the graves, nothing's going to really come of this. Uh, Fragstar pick up the dragon for free. It's yeah, and that's also, a, that's also a flash down on the Vayne. And she doesn't really have the most reliable repositioning in the game. The tumble is okay. Doesn't look like they're going to try and rush at Baron right now, but they did just see Lee Sin run through that mid lane brush. So it does. I do think that uh, Frysuck are aware that they're in that Baron area. Doesn't look like they're in like like they're in any rush to get there though. Oh wow, we're actually getting caught up by Glacier Team. He's going to take really low. He is really low right now. But he managed to slice and dice over the wall, but the final true bolt. Um, Silver Bolt Croc just popping onto him and getting him over the wall. That's gonna hurt. That's gonna hurt a lot because that's a free Baron going over to the um, uh, team of Cardiff right now when they should have been really going on to the team of Fragstock. But it doesn't look like Fragstock want to try and contest this, but he's gonna go down very, very soon. Yeah, and that was, a, that was an error from the game going down. Uh, Kennan coming out with the ultimate, coming down the blitz track. Aaron, Spirit runs away, uh, trying to get back into Fight and find someone. Nautilus getting chased down by the vein here. Aerie manages to land his on the lease in and blow him up. Nautilus escaping on a slither of health. So Cardiff right there did the correct thing, engaged once they were out of position. However, they didn't quite get that maelstrom off and to catch their two weak members in it. So they really had to commit a lot of their damage onto the Nautilus, meaning that the Lee Sin was exposed and they could clean up on that. So what what's going to come from here? Do you know, is that going to swing the game for uh, Cardiff having that Baron buff, or do you think Fragstock can continue with the lead they had before it? I think it depends on uh, who Ari has managed to pick out here. Because unfortunately for them, unfortunately for Fragstock, that Vayne is just getting stronger right now. She's just picked up a BF sword, so I mean she's really doing. Uh, getting towards a big late game build, she hasn't, oddly enough, still hasn't opted for any more attack speed, so she's not really going to be attacking at the sort of speeds that Evanes want to be attacking at this point in the game. She's currently only on 1.4, when really she should be looking for a 1.8, 1.75 level attack speed at this point in the game. Um, Graves, on the other hand, is looking to attack at that sort of level. He has picked up a Zephyr, um, but he doesn't have the Blade of the Rune King, so really they're looking at sort of similar attack speed. But again, Graves is an AD caster type, sort of hybrid type AD carry. So he has the ability to uh, do high damage from Buckshot as well as collateral damage. And he doesn't solely rely on auto attacks like Vayne does. Um, They're just going to push Cardiff off their blue buff here. Lissandra wants to pick that up. Lissandra actually has very little mana regen here. Usually you see the Morella, Morella Nomicon coming in and uh, giving you that sustained damage. Whereas she has opted straight for the Haunting Guy, so the poke. But you do kind of run out of damage when you start throwing out a few too many... Uh, few too many cues on the Sandra. Um, she's got low cooldown, so you're constantly using mana. Wow, and uh, uh, Fragstock are really separated out here. There was Blitzcrank all by himself. He's getting taken really low by the vein. She is completely melting. It looks like uh, she's going to go use the Vader thing onto the Nautilus, and he's going to go down soon. He looks like he tried to overcommit to a team fight, and, and Fragstock really weren't really sure what they wanted to do right there. Yeah, total lack of communication again. Uh, the Nautilus could have, should have just left that Blitzcrank. You know, he's caught. You're going to lose your support, but you're going to easily hold off turrets there. Instead, 
he was kind of, come on guys, we can do this area that I was saying, no, I'm going home, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, like... so Ari and Graves and Renekton all ran away from that team fight when Nautilus pushed himself a little bit too close. He committed himself with that dredge line into the middle of the team, then you tried to use his, um, Try to use his Riptide to try and get to the way, but unfortunately, that Riptide's not going to slow you enough to sort of deal with a Vayne who used that Blade of the Marine King to get the movement speed bonus, and the Lissandra who has slow and on the I appreciate right here. Engage going down, Kennen, blowing everyone to the mail. Drop. Full on commitment here from Cardiff, uh, everyone drops down. Vayne just allowed to sit there and deal damage at the back, as they kind of surprised him with that incident straight under the turret as they did with me. Yeah, and that was a surprise engage from McKinnon, flashing and using Spicy Maelstrom onto everyone that was trying to defend that turret. as a free turret and three kills. Vayne pops their Night Hunter, is just going to try and scare the uh, Nautilus and the Blitzcrank away. Um, Cardiff are pretty low right now, I think they need to back off. Uh, Vayne, while wow, just duking out the um, duking out the pool with uh, Tumble, does look like they're really going for this. It looks like Lisa's coming on, he's he's really, really low, he's going to get the last kill, maybe Vayne picks it up, and now he's... Blitzcrack is stuck under the turret and that's a double kill going on to Vayne. She's now at this stage where she is unfortunately unstoppable. But then she just picked up the kill as Lissandra was left to tank the turret right there. And I think Flagstock are going to be face palming right now because they were ahead and now they're now sitting at a 4.5k gold deficit. Yeah, they just didn't react quick enough. You know, it's 38 minutes into the game. At that point, you don't need to worry about the turrets. If they're out of position on the turret, you can engage straight on it. And Fragsock kind of thought, oh, it's alright, we've got a turret here, guys. We can... We can sit back and relax and straight away Cardiff just turned around with that really good engage and just blew them straight up into the turret. I don't think that Ari was even allowed to spirit a rush away from that. Um, especially with that frozen tomb and, and Cassandra's W locking her up. Yeah, so really well played from the Cardiff team right here. They're playing their team comp exactly how they need to, just pushing it, pushing it into that late game. Vayne has now picked up an Infinity Edge. She probably is going to be building towards a um, Phantom Panzer. Um, She's going to be scary, to be honest, Theory. I, I, I don't know what they have on their team, bar a, a surprise hook with a follow-up from a Nautilus, CC and Ari complete burst. I don't know what else they can do to deal with her. I mean, it's interesting what Ari's built here. She's gone for that full damage, but the problem is it's really left that open to Lissandra and Kennen locking her up in the team fight. If she'd gone for that early Zonya, she could have dodged a lot of that damage and then reposition got onto that vein and perhaps picked up at the minute she's not doing very much work at all and it means that this vein's been able to just itemize up and just start coming into the team fights much stronger well the fact uh, that ari that ari doesn't provide as much that it looks like Lisa's going to get onto the renekton with a sonic and resonating strike he's taken pretty low renekton just to get the uh, ruthless predator off onto him Lisa in just 75 percent of his health chunk looks like nautilus wants to go for a re-engage right here but nothing was burned on either team of notable uh, cooldown, so it does look like all of the ultimates are still up. I think Lee Sin is just going to back off and heal up. I don't think he's I don't think he's the character that should be engaging from Cardiff right now because he can be burst pretty easily. Lee Sin is not the tankiest, uh, inherently tanky character in the game. And to be honest, Frank Stock are doing the right thing. They're really sort of being aggressive because I think they need to be. I think that they were winning team fights when they were forcing them on their terms. When they were getting engaged upon, I think that's where they were failing. Yeah, just that. Lee Sin is just poking out with another um, Sonic Wave and Resonating Strike. Doesn't actually follow this one up this time. Looks like more wards are coming out as well. Um, uh, and now Fragstock are just... looking ward right there. Yeah. Fragstock are just going to go rotate for the Dragon. Uh, they're just going to take that free chunk of gold. I think they need all of the global gold they can get right now, but unfortunately I think it might just be getting too late for them. They need to make the catches in these team fights, otherwise I don't think they're going to go on their terms. Uh, I think they'll then rotate down bottom lane. Yeah, I think Graves especially, just rotating down, rotating down this bottom lane to try and push it out. Actually, he's been told to turn around, so maybe there's a call coming out that they want to push for this middle inhibitor. Um, I think that's probably where it, it, that's probably where their best bets are lie. I mean, you don't want to fight anywhere near it. But actually, it looks like Nautilus is going to go tank this really low turret, uh, and that'll be a free turret coming over to uh, Fragstock again. Yep, definitely. Bane's trying to chase down onto that Renekton and him just backing off. The problem they face here is that Graves has actually just picked up that Quicksilver Sash. If he can manage to avoid the assassination from Lissandra and Kennen, and he can start doing real damage. It looks like Bane is not. getting picked, but she does just flash, and that was a, a bit of a baited out um, hook from the uh, Blitzcrank right there. He wanted to make sure he really got it. He just lost a bit of vision. It does look like they're going to go aggressive right here. Lissandra coming in with the Glacial Pass, it doesn't quite get onto them. Uh, that Lily Andrews is now followed up with a Void Staff. Yeah, 
definitely, and that that just increases your damage dramatically. You know, Graves came out with that quick sort of slash, as I was saying, as well as that great passive uh, uh, use that you get from it. You also have the magic resistance. It doesn't look like Sandra's going to get the flash and Grace will see on Tiara, but she has got a spirit of Vader. She uses the flash and gets out. It looks like the entire team fight. Kind of managed to catch both Vader and Dauntless in his fighting mental. And Vader picks up a kill. The trainer is taking really low right here. That's going to be. Oh, right. She just flashes up the trap. Everyone is really low, but Vader is just cleaning house right now. Running around the entire team. Picks up a quadra kill. And Ari is going to back out and not give away that scumbag Penta. That's the power of that IE. You know, if you'd have seen that picked up slightly earlier. You'd have seen that coming in a lot earlier into the game. Now that IE is up, Vayne is just resting in face and Graves just can't compete with the damage. He's got, he's got that Mercurial Scimitar, which while it gives you some anti attack damage, it hasn't got that critical strike chance that he needs uh, if he's got to play from the back. Yeah, and, um, uh, and another unfortunate thing really is that he hasn't really built classical high damage AD carry items, picking up that Mercurion, that Zephyr, is putting him a bit behind is where he should be and his, his highest potential damage. Uh, it doesn't like they're um, going to burn this Baron down. Obviously the uh, true damage from the Vayne doing really, really high damage and the Leandri is doing percentage health based damage. Ari, I just don't think she's going to be able to contest I don't think she wants to. She's just going to back off and that's going to be another free Baron going over to Cardiff. They're now 7k ahead right now. I'm not sure what Fragsock can do from this point now because Vayne just cleaned house that last team fight. I mean, what I'd have really liked to see on the Blitzcrank, that's Shirelius, um, if they could have disengaged off that Kennen ulti with the Nautilus ulti to counter it and Shirelius to back them off, then they could perhaps look to re-engage into the fight and just pick people up. Unfortunately, the fight is so chaotic with the Kennen ulti and the Lissandra ulti coming down together in synergy that Half the team is lost before they even get going, and that enables the Vayne just to clear up after the team fight. Yeah, Vayne really doing exactly what she needs to do. She just picked up a Guardian Angel as well, so opting not to finish that Phantom Dancer and picking up a straight Guardian Angel is going to make her even harder to burst right now. Ari could blow all of her skills on that Vayne, and Vayne would still be alive, right? So that's a really decent pickup. Uh, Graves obviously opting for that uh, Mercurian Scimitar because there was so many sort of forms of CC in terms of magic damage CC coming out. But I think he shouldn't be he shouldn't be putting himself into a position where that's going to happen anyway. It does look like they're trying to go for a team fight. At least he just gets hard. Kenan flashes in, gets a slice of onto Kenan and onto the Lord to get Vayne is at the back right now, trying to take on this Renekton, but Renekton is taking very low, very, very low. He pops that Guardian Angel again. Vayne's going to run that ground, go down for that Nautilus. She's popping her Silver Bolts right now. Ari is very low. It does look like the time to get some Glacial Path in right now. She's looking to try and trace onto this Ari. Ari's not got any Spirit Rushes left. Oh wow, and Ari just managed to get caught by one of Lissandra's Glacial Spikes. And that's another kill going over to Lissandra. Really well played. So I think I called it Glacial Spikes, but I think it's called Ice Shard. Really well played, wow. and I just think they're in a position, even though they, when they get in, engaged like that, being someone caught out, I just don't know if there's anything that uh, Gregson can do right now. They're going to look to take this bot for it, and uh, in him, Graves heals the pool. They renekt him back at base, that could have been a bit of a mistake. He's trying to push out the wave and make sure they can get this, but in doing so, he's actually meant that they can't defend that turret at all and they're going to lose the inhib for free here. And they're just going to back off and take that second inhibitor. Uh, I don't know what Francis can do right now, Theory. They have to make a miracle catch out and, and probably proc, proc that Vayne's GA and put, her, and put her down and then possibly go for a, a clean sweep. I think yep. that's the only way they're going to they're, the only way they're going to sort of finish this game right now. Yeah, uh, especially since the Renekton has picked up more. I mean, okay, right. I personally don't like more of Melortius as an item. I don't know what you think. I think it's a bit of a useless item. I think keeping it a hex drinker and using your money on something else is a lot more beneficial. Um, I mean, what do you think about the, the more of Melortius pickup? Yeah, definitely. Um, however, they're not huge cooldowns here. You know that that the the bonus of it is that if you're on low HP, it's going to give you extra AD damage. At this but point, it's, it's, it's a maximum of 35. Okay, a maximum of 35 on a Renekton is not going to be game-breaking so I, I don't know why I, mean, I think it's something like near enough 2,000 gold to convert a hex drinker into a more of Melotius. I think he could have used it as something else yeah probably finish his black finishing his black cleaver probably would have been better doesn't look like they're going to take this top lane turret for free Ari manages to land a charm onto Kennen and she manages to lightning rush away out of the death charge that's a death charge down looks like Vayne is getting pretty close to the edge right here Lee Sin has gone all the way in onto turret Landing a charm onto the vein, that's really, really nice. She goes in, absolutely burst from that uh, Death by Grass.
but the Guardian Angel doing exactly what he needed to. But, oh, great to go, really, really party. But Kenan still has a slightly melt on, he completely melts the uh, rage right there. And that's a dead crocodile, gonna make a nice pair of boots for the Vayne. And that's, and Lissandra going really hard on the fish pad. That's a pickup for Vayne again, and that's just the Nautilus left alive. Lissandra uses the Zonias to get out of the, the um, turret range, and that's completely clean sweep and A, so that's a GG's coming up from Flagsock. And I think that's yep. a surrender. I believe it is. I thought screen freezes right there. Uh, with that Vayne there in that final team fight, you know, she got out of position, she was caught, but there was a brilliant flash that got back into her back line as the Guardian Angels went down and, and either it was either Ignite or Red Buff, I didn't quite see. That brought that Guardian Angels down. And then the Renekton overcommitted after it. He thought, just lost a GA, what am I worrying about? But it just meant that Kennen could come forward blow up the graves and suddenly there's no damage coming out of uh, Fragsock right there. So brilliant game overall and really well played from the Cardiff team using that triple threat but lack of tank perhaps in the right synergy in order to overcome all that CC. Yeah, and I think that the straight up burst damage is what they needed because unfortunately for Fragsock no one got tanky enough to deal with the damage that was coming out. But game set and match right there, really well played. Um, from the uh, from the Cardiff team, they had the late game team and they pushed it to the late game, which is likely when they needed.